trial in the James Boyd murder trial. It was three guilty and nine not guilty votes for both officers, leading the judge to make the announcement. Based on this information, the court finds that there is no reasonable probability that the jury can agree and is going to conclude this proceeding by declaring a mistrial. Action 7 News reporter Megan Cruz was inside the courthouse when they announced the mistrial. She joins us live with reaction. That's right, Doug and Shelley. We got word of the possible verdict around 4.30 this evening. 15 minutes later, we are in that courtroom. The jury telling the judge they could not reach those unanimous verdicts. As you said, the vote broke down. Three guilty, nine not guilty for second degree murder for both Keith Sandy and Dominic Perez. Again, you know this is, of course, one of our state's most high profile cases. So joining us now, we have our legal expert, John Day. You know, John, you and I were talking earlier today about how, you know, the writing was on the wall for this mistrial today. Right, Megan. What we had was two full days of jury deliberation. And during those two full days, the jurors never came out with a question. They never asked the judge for clarification. They never asked for more information about jury instructions or evidence. So what that tells me is that they were engaged in very intense discussions about whether to hold these police officers guilty. And that's what they were focused on. And that alone and nothing, nothing else came into their considerations because they were so focused on guilty or not guilty. And I think it was very clear that those three jurors were holding out very strongly, they felt very strongly, and I think we can understand that. And at the end of the day, they just could not make a decision unanimously. Right, and 15 minutes after we heard about these, you know, non-verdicts, really, we heard from both the prosecution and the defense, and they really had some insightful things to say walking away from this case. Right, Randy McGinn, the special prosecutor, said, look, I didn't have an agenda. I went in there and I did what I thought I had to do. And in fact, I think she did as good a job as anybody could have done in those circumstances. At the end of the day, she could, was able to convince three of those 12 jurors that it was a, that should have been a guilty verdict. On the other hand, Sam Bregman, Luis Robles, the defense team, I think also did an outstanding job. And I think they reflected a lot of the, the feeling in the community also, I think, that we saw about the fact that these officers were on trial for murder. And I think you saw the relief in the faces of the, of the two defendants and of the defense team when the, when the judge announced that the jury was deadlocked. Right. So now I guess the question moving forward is, I mean, do you retry this case? Well, it's a good question. What happens now is the district attorney gets to decide, are we going to retry it? Are we going to go through the expense and the time of, of doing this all over again? Of course, there's a new district attorney who's coming into office in January. And if the current DA, Carrie Brandenburg, doesn't want to make that decision, she can kick it down the road to the new DA. What do you think? I mean, again, this is a high profile case. Do you think that this should be retried considering how many people, I mean, the community wanting to see maybe a resolution in this? Well, look, I think when you're analyzing this, you have to look at the fact that it was a three to nine vote. It was not six, six. I mean, it was not as close as it could have been. In fact, the, the obviously the majority of the jurors voting not to convict. So I think you have to take that vote into consideration because it's a poll you can't ignore. All right. Thank you so much, John Day. I appreciate it. And again, as you heard him say, really the decision is going to come down to probably the next district attorney who will get sworn in in January. So we might have to wait and see till next year whether or not Keith Sandy and Dominic Perez will have to go through this all over again. For now, live in district court, Megan Cruz, KUAT Action 7 News. Megan, thank you. Nancy Laughlin has been following both sides of this case, covering the defense and prosecution. She's live for us outside district court. Nancy. Well, Shelly, attorneys on both sides say they're okay with what the jury came back with today. Special Prosecutor Randy McGinn says this was down out in the open for the public to see, and no matter what, she was okay with what the jury decided. I don't fault the jury for doing anything. And, and so, you know, I was always okay in this case with whatever the jury did. Our job was to put all the facts out there so that the city can see it, um, so that the jury could see it, and so the police department could see it. Okay, we also spoke with defense attorney Sam Bregman, and he says this sends a strong message with what the jury came back with. He said that these officers did what they were trained to do, and the majority of the jury saw that. Obviously, we wanted a not guilty, but 9-3, I think, sends a pretty positive message about how we believe all along this case is pretty weak. Okay, as far as cost, Special Prosecutor Randy McGinn agreed to do this for $5,400. I asked if she was going to be asking for any more additional fees. She says she will not. For the officers, they paid for this defense out of their own pocket, and I'm told that both of them are essentially bankrupt. Sam Brigman and Louis Robles, the defense attorneys in this case, say that if they are retried, that they will do this pro bono. Back to you. KWT reporter Kirsten Swanson spoke to the jury's foreman right after the trial. She's live at the courthouse. 
Well, that's right, Doug and Shelley. Ray Darvilla was picked as the foreman and really held a lot of the cards here when the jury were deliberating. He told us right after that personally he felt those officers should have been convicted. He believed uh, he sided with the prosecution that when Boyd turned away, that was a sign he was ready to surrender to come down and that he felt the officer's actions were not correct. Of course, the majority of that jury, though, sided with the defense. They said it was just they were just doing their training. Uh, we did ask him a couple different questions. He thought that um, these officers should have used a less lethal option. Um, and really, we were interested to know in that jury room, what was the feeling like? Were they basing their decisions on facts or on emotions? And he said the majority of the people in there decided on the facts that they took turns role playing each other's perspectives and really tried to work through this to get to a unanimous decision. Uh, but listen to him as uh, the final hours tonight came down. Just take a listen to his sound here. And um, so that's it's it's just really difficult uh, a task that, you, that the jury took on uh, to view the, the video over and over and over the, the, the transcript of the things that uh, occurred that day, uh, all the physical evidence and, and we just came to an impasse. Where did you Another really, really interesting thing here is that he said they watched that video, that helmet, helmet camera video over and over and over dozens of times in the jury room after seeing it in the trial originally. He also said something really interesting. He believes that both the prosecution and the defense didn't do a good enough job arguing their respective points and that that factored a lot into the decisions there. More from him. He has a lot of insightful things to say from inside the jury room uh, tonight as we continue our coverage of the hung jury here for now. Live at the District Courthouse, Kirsten Swanson, KOAT Action 7 News. A small number of protesters are gathering outside the courthouse right now. Let's go to KOAT Action 7 News reporter Matt Howerton, who's live there. Yeah, Shelly, I think we expected a strong reaction uh, to this verdict, regardless of what it was going to be. Behind me, a group of protesters has gathered to uh, speak against this mistrial. We'll let you kind of get in a little bit closer to hear what they're talking about. Many of them holding up signs, uh, protesting APD, uh, and, and really saying that James Boyd didn't deserve to die and that it was an injustice that he was shot uh, in the foothills in 2014. We talked with one protester uh, who told us that the culture inside APD has not changed, regardless of the involvement with the Department of Justice. We have these law enforcement officers that are like literally cowboying it up. So I don't know if you can see right now, but there is a member of Albuquerque police on a nearby rooftop. He's monitoring this protest right now. Clearly, they don't want to see something happen in 2014 where the entire part of downtown was filled with protesters. A lot of damage was done to the city and uh, a lot of bad things happened that day. So they're going to be monitoring this situation to make sure that it doesn't get out of control. And if it does get out of control, we've been told that there will be numerous agencies, including New Mexico State Police, BCSO, and even Rio Rancho to assist if things were to go south. Back to you in the studio. All right, Matt, thank you. Once again, a judge has declared, has declared a mistrial in the murder case against former New Mexico police officers Keith Sandy and Dominic Perez. The jury deadlocked with nine jurors in favor of a not guilty verdict. Three voted guilty on second degree murder charges. Again, a hung jury. We will continue covering this throughout the evening. And for the latest, you can also go to our app or our website, koat.com.